What's up, guys? Good morning. It is Jonathan with One Big Impact. Where's my glasses? Who knows? I want to talk to you guys for a minute because, man, have we had some stuff going on lately. I am snapped back into low carb. I feel good about it. Um... The reason for this video is actually to recognize the people that have been grinding it out for a really, really, really long time. There's a lot of individuals out there that have been with this family, healthy living for a healthy life for a really long time. And, you know, fast forward, said that wrong, rewind back to when it all began I started thinking the other day I saw something come up in my memory thing and it was like four or five years ago and it was um, me working out at Lifetime now Lifetime was when I was about 280, 290, and just those few short years ago, I used to go to McDonald's every morning um, after I would leave the gym. Before I leave the, before I get to the gym, I eat two breakfast sandwiches and two green monsters. And there was a point in which, before that, you know, at my heaviest weight, I was drinking four and five of those green monsters a day really didn't know anything about health, fitness, I'm not gonna lie. All of this eating right, being active, um, being in good shape or okay shape is something that is extremely new and foreign to my entire existence and the reason I know that is because when I look back on my family I'm not gonna say that this is the worst image ever as far as like inability to be active or anything but I will damn sure say that I can't even think to where anybody was even remotely physically active in my family. Now that I think about it. Nobody. Nobody ran races. Nobody lifted weights. Nobody pushed themselves. Nobody was ever on a diet or all this stuff was extremely new to me. And I know a lot of you guys struggle to stay on track. Um, it's probably one of the hardest things is not really having a foundation of this type of lifestyle in which you can build off of. A lot of the times you'll see these individuals that are the epitome of health and fitness and things and they could very well come from a background of health, fitness, maybe their dad's a PE teacher or Mom's a nutritionist or something, and they eat good quality whole meals every single day. Now, does that mean that's an excuse for you not to do something because somebody else had a better background? Of course not. In no way, shape, or form. It's actually, I think, a hurdle you need to get over, including myself. But I will say, a lot of the times it makes it much easier 
for an individual like that because they are surrounded and they have a built lifelong foundation of this type of thing. Okay. Now, I know that there's some of you guys out there that have been here, whether it's healthy living for healthy life or one big impact or wherever it is, and you've fallen off. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I have tripped and fallen off myself. And it's hard to admit that, you know, sometimes. I would say I probably held on a lot harder than anybody had. Not anybody, I shouldn't say that. I'm not trying to compare myself to anybody. But meaning, like, because I am who I am, meaning, you know, where this is all started, there's a lot, there's a lot more pressure on staying on track and making sure I create the best possible scenario for all of us. Um, and even when I was, quote, off track, I was still eating good, healthy foods. I wasn't like cruising through McDonald's or anything. It was just like my macros were messed up and I was ending up through Chipotle two, three times a week. And it was just, it was, it was getting excessive. Too many energy drinks, and it was just, it was out of control, okay? And the reason I'm saying that is because my question to you is, how long have you been doing this? I posted something the other day that 80% in, I think, the first five years of people dieting or trying to lose weight, 80% of them gain it back and more. If you go out seven years, 99% of the people that lost weight gain it back. Here's why that's important to me. Because we are family. And if you hear me saying this, you probably know who I'm talking to. It's probably you. And I don't care if your route is Atkins. I don't care if your route is low carb. I don't care if you want to eat carbs. I don't care if you just want to not, you're at the point where you don't want to count anything and you just want to stay active and you want to keep moving and you want to, sorry, it's three o'clock in the morning and you want to chase runs and you want to go swimming and you want to do act, act exercises or aerobics or something like that it doesn't matter to me but what does matter to me is that you don't give up on yourself we're going on I think it's two or three years in healthy living for a healthy life my YouTube's been going on a little longer than that as far as like the healthy scheme my I think my YouTube's six years old but it's not six years old from weight loss and everything considering started out with like DIY videos why that matters to me is because we're starting to hit the marks where people will fall off I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to stay on track. I want you to stay on track because your life depends on it. It really does. And here's how you know that it does. Because the day that you have a random health issue and you end up in the hospital and they say, whoa, you know, so and so, how active have you been? What have you been eating? You know, you had this heart attack because blah, blah, blah. And at that point, you're going to think and you're going to say, I haven't been doing everything right. I've been eating like crap. I haven't been moving. I haven't been keeping my heart and lungs healthy. I haven't been, you know, exercising, building muscle. 
some of you are aging okay and obviously that's inevitable for a lot of us but think about it once you hit 40 50 60 years old your bone loss your muscle mass is deteriorating at an acceleration rate and to be able to hold on to that is quite the battle and not only that getting rid of fat at that age as you progress in age is going to be continuously harder can it be done of course of course it can be done you see it every day somebody older that loses a hundred pounds the uh, the best thing that I think you can do regardless if you're on track or off track is this two things okay read now you're probably thinking that beyond positive thinking has nothing to do with losing weight it has a lot to do with goals this book has a lot to do with goals it has a lot to do with making sure that I achieve the things that I'm trying to achieve making sure that I'm not being negative about my mindset and so on and so forth. This is another book. No excuses. Brian Tracy. This is only the second book I've ever read in my life. The first one I sent out to Ron Grimes, if you remember that young man. He's a pastor now and he's got a busy life and I do believe he's no longer focused on the things that we're focusing on which is fine there's nothing wrong with that I still have the bracelet he made for me um, it hurts my heart when people disappear but the most important thing is even if you're off track keep your mind on track okay and it's not this book. It's not it's not it's not the all new actions advantage. It's not jump by Steve Harvey. It's not the science of success. It's not how to prosper in the hard times. It's not mindful journey journaling. It's not the art of thinking clearly. It's not goals by Brian Tracy. It's not the complete ketogenic diet for beginners. It's not anatomy of exercise. It's not any of those things, you guys. What it is, is continuing your knowledge and letting yourself believe that even though, even though you're off track, you really can do your best to keep pushing forward mentally because I don't like to read I never have I don't like to run I never have it's not my thing and you're probably asking yourself right now why do you read why do you run well, I stopped running for a while because of injuries. I'm going to roll out my leg because it's hurting me from running. I read because I know that I should. True story, when I was younger, I started getting teared up about this. When I was younger, I was a really slow reader in class. There was nothing, nothing more terrifying than reading in front of other people. When I would get to class, I would start sweating, thinking that they would call on me. And I would have to read. 
and kids would make fun of me and the teacher would always say you need to read faster and I couldn't I really couldn't I, I don't know what it was if it was the anxiety or it was really really hard for me I remember in seventh grade, there was a teacher, I won't say his name, but I had him in seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade. Failed the class three times. Why the hell they gave me the same teacher? I don't know. In ninth grade, he told me, you're not really going to make nothing of yourself, are you? You know, and at that point, I really didn't know the impact that those probably those words probably had on me. But I will say that I continue to read <laughs> because even if I'm off track, I know that maybe maybe one day something will click, and that's usually what happens. And it doesn't have to be books, but if there is a book that you're looking for. Send me a message and I'll send you a link because it helps me out. So I appreciate that. This will literally be the only, the third book I've ever read in my life. And I'm really pushing hard to get through it. It's all mangled and nasty. It's all written in. I got all kinds of things written down. I don't like the book. I don't. I've learned to deal with the, this book. I like to shop. I like to buy stuff. And I like to be very spontaneous. So I buy a lot of books. But I don't read very many of them. I'm on page 137 out of 162, I believe. I believe I've checked that multiple times. Yes, 162. So that's only a few pages. I'm getting down to where I'm only able to do a paragraph or two at a time, maybe a page or two sometimes. And I'm trying really hard, and I'm going to finish it. But I've learned some things in this book that I would not have learned if I did not keep reading. And if you're off track, read. Um, read about self-control, read about self-discipline, read about goals, read about health, um, read about nutrition, read about uh, self-help is definitely one of my favorite things uh, to read. I don't enjoy like stories. I will probably never read a storybook like a fiction. I think it's called fiction. The stuff that's not real is fiction, right? I don't really know. I googled it last night. I think it's fiction. That's not my thing. I like to try to improve on myself. And I think you should too. Because even when you're going through difficult times, which we all do, you know, say you're going through a divorce or you're having problems with your child or whatever and maybe your emotional eating got out of control your exercise took a back burner financially you had to cancel your gym membership whatever the things that you have to remember though are you're still able to read okay if you're watching this video you have internet and you probably have internet on your phone maybe you don't have internet at home but your internet on your phone has a special little thing called Google <laughs> And you can Google anything. You can go to WikiHow and say how to lose weight. I like WikiHow. Every once in a while I get stuck on there. Probably once every six months I go back and go through learning all kinds of new things. And the internet is an amazing thing. It's basically like a bunch of free books. I'm not saying all the information is going to be correct, but I will say that 
it's an extremely beneficial thing to learning why you are doing what you're doing. It could be self-sabotage. It could be stress. It could be emotional eating. It could be all kinds of things. And you need to find out what that is. Or at least try to learn about it. Try to expand your mind. And the second thing, this little guy, and I'll put links below to a few books that I recommend. And there will be only a few. Um, because I've only read a few. Number three, and I'm almost 40 years old. Number three, I'm almost done with. It's kind of crazy when you can actually tell how many books you've actually read. Isn't that interesting? Parts of books. Ooh, thousands, I'm sure. Parts of books. Paragraph. I've probably bought hundreds of books. You get them home and it, you're like, I don't really like this. <laughs> I did buy another book. I believe <laughs> it's about um, self-discipline and it's coming. So I need to hurry up and read this book. I told myself I wouldn't buy a book until I finish this book. So that's probably a good practice. But this little guy is a book of goals. Okay. And you don't need something like this. I have goals written everywhere. I'm a goal writing mofo. And I'm not going to lie, probably three quarters of them have gotten lost. Maybe, probably more than that. Look at this damn thing. This is a goals thing. What the freak is that mess written on the wall right there? These goals written all over the walls. Okay. I know. It's kind of excessive. And it's a little bit weird sometimes. So... I tried to centrally locate them in a purchased book. And first of all, I like this because it has this so it doesn't get all ragged, you know? I don't have a lot of time to write in it, but opening it up to the first few pages, I wrote some things in there. So. The first thing it says is my gratitude and self-awareness. I am grateful for, and I said, my children, my home, my air conditioning, my bed, clean clothes, my car, my clients, my YouTube, healthy living for healthy life, and one big impact. I thought that was cool because it says my gratitude. What am I grateful for? You know? What am I passionate about? Helping others. YouTube and making people laugh. My daily rituals. Skills to learn and adopt this year. Life coach, NASM live workshop, powerlifting referee, more info about nutrition, stretching clients, training staff. My affirmations. Good things are coming. You are a great person. Life is good. You are going to be wealthy. It is my intention to earn hundred thousand dollars I'm a nice guy people like me these are those affirmations are things I really struggle with believing so although I said them I'm not gonna lie it's been a struggle saying this so and then you come into here where it has like my goals and it starts to break down some things and it says my top goals for this year Health, business, career, family, and friends, significant other, and romance, finance, personal development, fun and recreation, and spiritual. After looking at these, two things are blank. I didn't realize that before. Family and friends. Fun and recreation. The health is hit 199, sustained muscle. Um, so I hit 215 on 828. 
and then on 211 or on 831 I hit 211 so I'm on track and I'm going back each I don't know I don't know if it's a week at first I don't think I opened it for like a month maybe not a month maybe three weeks two three weeks and then after that um, I've been opening it pretty regularly just to kind of just jot down some updates and keep track of what I'm doing because it's you're supposed to go back into it every week business and career 15 clients uh, make sixty six hundred dollars per month and fifty thousand dollars on YouTube still working on that YouTube thing dang it. <laughs> I think I gotta stop saying bad words on YouTube speaking of which I have a bad word on my shirt hopefully that's family friendly <laughs> uh, significant other romance just says find people that care finance a hundred thousand dollars in a year for a year I don't know why I said for a year personal development become more of what I want to be stretching certificate PNF proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation right. spiritual work on one hour per day pure focus knowledge reading daily after this I'm gonna read I'm sorry this video is so long this happens to be my favorite part right here you see I really really wrote in that part it's called my focus this year <laughs> this year I am focused on like five things okay as far as the way I took it I don't know why I put this year five things I don't know 50 cl 15 clients okay I lost a couple recently I was up to twelve and then I went down and then I went up so right now I'm at eleven I'm trying to make seven thousand dollars a month <coughs> just so you know that's a very wild number for myself very wild never made that in my life never I think the most I've probably ever made in my life was two thousand three thousand dollars a month maybe a job the most I've ever made per hour was 13 and it was for like a month usually it's the highest would be like 10 or 11 hence why I'm working for myself So I'm at 11 clients right now. I need to push for four more. As high as 20, but I'm 15, I want to start and see how that feels. By December 2nd, I want to hit four more countries. That'll be six countries for the year. Now, I don't know if I'm going to stay in Krakow and just stay there. Um, but I did make my first payment. Finally, the other day, three days ago, hopefully it doesn't screw up my whole month. I had a couple clients cancel on me last minute last month and they did not make their last payment. So it really hit me financially. Um, unfortunately, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, but I made my first payment. I was able to do it. My first payment for my plane ticket was 151. So that got paid. So I have two payments left and then the ticket is mine. The next one is pay off credit cards and um, four total this year. The four that I said I wanted to pay off was Synchrony, Walmart, Home Depot, and Credit One. So technically it'll be five because I already paid off Milestone like probably right before I wrote this. And then Synchrony is about $500. It says six months it should be paid off, but I think 
I'll be paid off quicker than that. But hopefully get all these cranked down. The other ones, um, it says update. Milestone is paid off. Next is synchrony. Ah, 829. Ah, so I have three cards left. Or something like that. I don't know. It's funny because Credit One's hit me up trying to give me a higher balance. I'm like, no! What's wrong with you guys? Goal number four is cabin in Payson or Christopher Creek area to rent out Airbnb credit cards. I'm currently paying $585 per month. Once I get those paid down, um, I am going to apply that 585 towards a place, um, which is exciting. I don't know if it'll be in Payson or Christopher Creek, but it'll be somewhere, somewhere where I can find a nice situation in um, cabin. I'd like to do, I've been thinking like off the grid, you know. Um, something off the grid I think would be pretty interesting. Uh, not really like pioneer type thing or whatever. I'm going to have solar power um, because I want to be able to probably have internet and stuff. Um, but I feel like I'll be able to create enough to where I can do stuff like that. And then the last one um, goal number five, and by the way, I will be reassessing. I wonder if there's a reassessment area. It's not. Maybe they don't anticipate you achieving these so fast. I don't know what all these, this week's main goal. Oh, I could break it down into weeks afterwards. That's what I'll do. What I need to do is probably start doing this. I'll improve next month. This month's wins. This month's goals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, half marathon by November 20th this year, 2019. So, here's the thing about that. <laughs> at the time I wrote this, or yeah, at the time I wrote this, I had not even thought about the 10K. And then I went back. And said doing a 10k August 31st okay and it's funny because the marathon and I did not remember writing this I'll be honest this was like the two or three week period in which I'm tired I'm gonna stretch I'm sorry the two or three week period that I was not looking at this book this goal book um, apparently I had found a half marathon randomly <laughs> to run that was in uh, Vegas and um, it's on November 17th <laughs> which is three days before this goal so it's funny because when you write things down and you work on these goals whether you're on track off track and you're reading and you're doing all these things your mind is like programmed to know what you were doing even though your subconscious lets it go you know what I mean so you're writing you're reading you're doing all these things or whatever and your mind's taking notes even though and it's in the back of the mind so when those two came back together and I opened this book the other day I was like huh that's literally three days how did that even happen because I didn't remember writing this night this date down it's kind of interesting how your mind works with you when you don't even know so um, by the way, I'll put a link in the description below if you guys would like to help. Um, I'm running for St. Jude's Hospital and I'm trying to raise $500. So if you would like to donate to that, I've started to go and fund me and I'm trying to earn $500 for child children's uh, cancer hospital, which is a pretty cool thing, I think. Um, but I, it also says doing a 10K here. August 31st, um, that was like two, two, three days ago, um, we showed up and they canceled without telling us. So we ran it anyway. Um, and I put here, they canceled, but I ran anyway. Um, two more days. What is this? Two more days. I don't know what two more days means. 
I don't know what that means. But I did it in an hour and 23 minutes, and literally by the end of it, I was like not walking properly, not running properly. I was I was hurt. Um, I, it was pretty hard, and it was really really hot, and um, it was difficult. But I did it, and I ran 6.2 miles, regardless of what they say, um, regardless of them not showing up and stuff like that. We ended up running a little bit later because we're wandering around stressed out and stuff and we still did it anyway even though my headphones weren't working so the reason I'm saying that even if you're off track you need to be working on your goals is because subliminally in the back of your mind somewhere your mind is going to be working in tangent with the things that you're wanting to achieve, even if your current mind, mindset is off track. As time goes by and you've been in healthy living for a healthy life or one big impact for a long time, you'll get off track. It's just That's just the way it is. Um, and that's called being human. But doing things like reading, doing things like focusing on your goals and doing things like vision boards because they have like these things mind map and vision boards um, let's see Here's it. Boom, vision boards I haven't done them yet but I will um, doing those things on a regular basis puts those images inside your head and you have to stop believing the things that were like told to you by others because we the more I read the more I understand that we tend to live our lives based on what we th our perceived reality is and usually it's not our reality it's a reality that was like forced upon us by others like loved ones or mom and dad or brothers and sisters or family or whatever because for instance like I dated a girl one time that was racist and I didn't realize how racist she was and when I grew up or when I grew up never gonna happen when uh, I realized how racist she was I kind of like dove into it a little bit obviously I wanted to try to change that about her because she was such a pleasant person it was so crazy I just didn't understand and she was literally living her parents' perceived reality of racism. And it was so sad because this person is probably the sweetest person that you'd ever meet in your life. And it was so strange and I just didn't get it. And then after reading and, you know, a few years goes by, I really, really started to understand that she probably wasn't racist. Um, she was just carrying those beliefs along because that's what she was taught. And the people that she loved and looked up to um, kind of fed her those ideas and stuff. So be careful um, about, you know, dumbing down your goals or dumbing down um, your capabilities or the things that you can do. Um, because, for instance, I took some autism tests last night and... Somebody else I dated a few years ago uh, used to tell me all the time, I think you have Asperger's. I think you have Asperger's. Um, I think you're like high functioning Asperger's or something. And I was just like, it was offensive. Like it was probably the most offensive thing I've ever heard. Like calling me a freaking R word. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to hear that. So I took some tests last night. <laughs> And I took like three different ones on three different websites and I'm not confirming it because I'm not a doctor and these are not clinical evaluations, obviously. But I found it interesting that on all three of them, I tested as high as possible. Um, like out of 34, I got 34. And out of 40, I got 40. And it was just kind of interesting. So... A couple years back or whatever I was going for social security disability because of bipolar and because of all these things and everybody in my family 
was always telling me that I was too messed up to work and um, I started to believe these things and my weight got out of control my depression got out of control um, I didn't want to be alive a lot and the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes other people's advice can help you but sometimes other people's advice can really hinder you so be very very careful about the things that you believe that other people believe about you because you know if it's like say I'm like I want to run a marathon and somebody looks at me and they're like you sure what what do you mean are you sure you know and then you'll start spiraling out of control especially if you're bipolar You'll start spiraling out of control and you'll start thinking all these things and you're like, well, maybe I can't. Maybe I'm just like, and then they'll be like, and then you'll question them again. And that's probably the worst thing you can do. You'll say, what do you mean? What do I mean? Do you think? And they go, well, you know, you got, you got bad knees or you got a busted hip or you're not that good at running or, and all these things because they feel more comfortable without you achieving those great things. And that's not good. You have to make sure that you are basing the things that you want to be able to achieve on what you feel. Even if it is this wild ass dream that you probably could never even do, try anyway. Because what if it did? What if you did? What if you what if you wanted to own a beautiful Italian villa on the coast of Amalfi in Italy? with grapevines going all through the windows as you're looking out upon the coast and you have these two little Italian ladies walking by speaking Italian and you every morning you go walk up to the pizzeria and you have them make a low carb pizza and a glass of wine and then you go sit on the beach with a nice umbrella and you chill and just soak up the sun That could be your future. But when you listen to others and you down yourself and you tell yourself that you can't do those things, you won't. There's no way. There's no way. When I traveled across the pond for the first time, thank you, Stephen Lorenz. Thank you, Mary Albridge even though you think I have a bad sense of direction and you think <laughs> I can't find myself where on because now I've made it through navigated successfully like almost 30 countries so <laughs> she we got in an argument one day she's like you don't have the best sense of direction I was like as I walked backwards I was like okay your ideas of what you believe are not what I believe and that was probably one of the best things I ever did we made up later But if you don't write goals, whether they're wild or basic or whatever, and you don't continue your knowledge on what you're trying to do, it's kind of like signing up for school. Say you sign up for a class. Say you sign up for, what is everybody like? Say you sign up for a philosophy class. I'm not going to say math because everybody don't like math. <laughs> say you sign up for a philosophy class and you really, really like the class, right? But you got to read the book and you got work to do and stuff like that. You go through three months of this one year class. Three months in, you stop studying. You stop focusing. You stop reading. You stop doing the work. It's kind of like being on track for a year and losing weight. You're setting goals, you're achieving things, you're seeing your weight move down, you're staying active, you're portion controlling, you're doing all these things. And then three months later, or two years later, or whatever, you stop. Now, if you're in that philosophy class, what happens when you stop? Your grades tank. If you're trying to lose weight and you stop, what happens? you gain weight. <laughs> so
So the lack of continuing your knowledge and continuing to focus on your goals, even if you're off track, you will indefinitely end up back where you were. So, and the reason I'm saying that is because I felt myself slipping. I felt myself, you know, going in that direction. And I had a mental breakdown, man. All kinds of things just piled up on me and hit me all at once. And it was like a good, just rebirth mentally. I was just like, man, life smacked me. By the way, I hate the colors of my wall. It's freaking ugly. <laughs> I need to do something like green or something. I can't afford more paint. It's just going to stay that way for now. <laughs> you guys, if you're struggling, open a notepad. Go to the link below. This is an awesome journal, but you don't have to buy a journal like that. It's a good book. A lot of people will probably like that book. Um, the No Excuses one to me was better. But it might not be now. It all depends on what you're going through at that point in your life. But if you can be really honest with yourself and say, hey, I'm struggling with putting food in my mouth. Or I'm struggling with anger or depression or peer pressure or going out to eat. Man, Google it. Find a book, send me a message, and I'll send you a link because I guarantee it's available on Amazon. Figure out what's going on inside your mind. Don't just give up because you're going to feel a hell of a lot better about yourself when you make those tiny little improvements. If you conquer, say if you conquered, so if it takes, say you're like really, really off track, right? You're really off track. You're like beyond off track. Now, if you go get a book about portion control or something like that, just randomly. And say you start controlling your portions, but you're really off track still. So it takes about, what is it? A hundred or 3,500 calories to be able to lose a pound, right? And you're like, oh, there's no way I'm gonna do that. I'm hella off track. Okay, I got you, I get it. So you go 52 divided by 100 times the 2. You can accidentally lose weight over the course of a year if you just did a hundred calories a week. Maybe you lose a pound. Maybe you lose 10. Maybe you lose 20. Maybe you don't stop with that book. Maybe you grab another one and then you get another hundred calories. And then, you know, maybe after two or three books, you're back on track. Give yourself some damn credit, you guys. If you did it before, you can do it again. You know, I proved I'm not trying to float my boat or brush feeling like brush my shoulder off or boasting myself or anything like that. But I just proved recently, okay, that after, and I need to write that goal on my August 20, October, September, October 28th, I want to be 199. My previous best 30 pounds or 30 days weight loss was 26 pounds. I tried really hard when I was like supremely on point with everything and I got 26 pounds in 30 days. I just did the other day 30 pounds in 30 days. So the rebirthing of your whole journey can be better. You know, if you did something before, stop saying, oh, I can't match that. I can't match that. I can't do that again. Bull crap! You can do it better because you know more and you can expand 
more on what you're learning. Don't be so damn hard on yourself, you guys. If you're off track, get back on track. Start small. Go for a walk. Walk around the house once. Do whatever. Instead of eating a meal, drink a glass of water. Happy Monday, guys. It's my favorite day of the week. Why? Because you set the tone of the week. It's either going to be amazing or it's going to suck. Which one are you going to set? You guys, be stronger than your excuses. Remember to spread love, not hate. Drink your damn water and have an awesome week.